In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. Did not expect snow this morning. My goodness. This is ridiculous. But of course it's appropriate, right? You know, the, the, uh, the uh, groundhog didn't see a shadow. We're supposed to get an early spring. That's what it says. And it, to be honest, it sounded up, up until this weekend, it sounded like the groundhog was right. It sounded like, you know, this, this little rodent in, in tiny village in western Pennsylvania, blah, blah, blah. No, anyway. Um, they, we, uh, it sounded like this, this thing, this uh, prognosticator got it right. But like, uh, here you go. We got this, this snow. I do find it appropriate that it's reminding us of dreariness a little bit, just a little bit of dreariness on the day that we're celebrating Judgment Sunday. That's what this is. It's also known as Meat Fair Sunday. We'll, we'll talk about more about Meat Fair Sunday um, during my announcements. Just uh, keep that, put that bookmark in there a little bit. Uh, it's called Judgment Sunday. And when we, um, when we uh, remember Judgment Sunday, this, this particular icon is brought out and it's kind of a very busy icon. It shows the Lord of hosts uh, that is sitting on, this, uh, sitting on his judgment seat and kind of looking down upon everyone. And in the heavens, uh, uh, kind of suspended with him are the individuals like the, the saints and the apostles that have already uh, found their, uh, their place before the Lord. But you go down and down and down and down and down until you get to a place where he really does, as the gospel tells us today, separate the sheep from the goats, the sheep in his, in, 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 on his right side in the icon and the, uh, the goats on the left. And, and it's very important that we understand this gospel in its proper context. A lot of people think this is a nice little story that Jesus told, but this is not a parable. The gospel, does not, the gospel writer Matthew does not give to us the words, the Lord spoke this parable, right? Matthew does not write these words. Matthew literally just says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory. So Jesus is not telling us something that might happen. He's not telling us something that, eh, you know, you can believe this if you want to believe it. If you believe in Jesus Christ, we have to believe in the day of judgment. Why? Because he himself spoke it. He himself spoke about a day of judgment. So before we get into this place where there's a lot of people out there that kind of say, oh, God wouldn't judge anyone. Yes, he would. Okay? His judgment is absolutely a doctrine that we believe. It's so important to our faith that we put it in our creed, in our symbol of faith. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. This is central to what we believe about our Lord. So we cannot um, fool ourselves into thinking that somehow there will not be a judgment. That somehow God who is all loving is just going to kind of accept everybody. Because how could a loving God reject anyone? We'll get into that in a second. There will be a judgment. And it's not a judgment that we think it's going to be. I mean, if, unless you happen to agree with Jesus Christ. It's a judgment of what he says it's going to be, not what we assume it is going to be. Not based on, ah, you know, I'm a good person. I'm all right. You know, I haven't murdered anyone. I didn't cheat on my spouse. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. There's a whole lot of people worse than I am. Last time I checked, when Jesus separated the sheep from the goats, he didn't put certain sheep above other sheep. Certain goats above other goats. Last time I checked. It's everyone lumped together. Everyone. He gathers all the nations. He actually says that specifically. He gathers all the nations together. What that means, beloved, it doesn't matter if we're Greek or not. <laughs> It doesn't matter if we're Pondian or not. It doesn't matter I'm Lebanese. It doesn't matter if I'm Lebanese or not. It doesn't matter if I belong to the United States or not. That doesn't matter. None of it. 
We can be German, we can be Irish, St. Patrick's Day next Sunday. We can be, you know, English, we can be anything. All nations will get lumped together. And you are separated by one condition and one condition only. Are you merciful or not? Can you see Jesus Christ in your brother or sister? Or do you treat them with disdain or worse, in this gospel, neglect? That's a hard, hard, hard lesson to understand. Now for sure, we read the scriptures, there's going to be more that's putting, you know, that's kind of put on our shoulders. You know, when it talks about our, our, our virtue, when it talks about our ability to, to really be patient, to, to seek after the, the, the fruits of the Spirit and things like this. Well, you read enough of the Scripture, it's not, you know, just based on one thing. But we cannot ignore the fact that when Jesus comes down, he puts all the nations together, which is a big slap in the face of the Jews, by the way. That's why he said it, by the way. He, Jesus put all the nations together as a slap of the face to the Jews at that time who thought that they were the only nation that was going to be saved. That they were the only important nation that existed. When he says, Panda ethni, the Jews heard, oh my goodness, there's going to be more than the Jews that are going to receive this kind of good judgment. And for us, we need to understand there's going to be more than just Americans or more than just Greeks or more than just Greek Americans or more than just whatever that are going to receive the goodness of our Lord. And the other thing that we have to understand is that God does not play favorites. His judgment that falls on the, on the righteous, it's the same exact judgment that falls on the unrighteous. Did you see me hungry and feed me? Did you see me thirsty and give me drink? Did you see me naked and clothe me? Did you see me sick and minister to me? Did you see me in prison and come to me? No matter whether you are on the right or on the left, his judgment is equitable. It is fair. He does not look at the ones on the right and say, ah, I like you, come on up. Yeah, you, get, all, get lost. It's not fair for the people in the memorial today, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's the point. The point is, is that God is absolutely 100% fair and he doesn't need me to say it. He already knows that he is. But every once in a while we have to be reminded which is why this gospel is so important to us. When we see judgment, we need to understand there are two words in the Greek for judgment. Two words. They, all, they both have the same uh, root word, which is krino. Krino means I judge. Katakrino, katakrino means I judge like sending down, condemn. It means I condemn. There are some places in the scripture where Jesus comes down to judge, crino. In other words, he's discerning. He's, he's kind of setting apart. This is good, this is bad, this is whatever. Okay? So, but he comes down and he offers uh, Katakrino, condemnation. He is condemning normally not people, but actions. In this particular case, when he separates the sheep from the goats, this is an act of judgment, setting them apart. It is also a continual act of condemnation. Not that he is sending them ever, er, anywhere. I want to make sure that we're very clear on this. God is not really sending them anywhere. He does say, depart from me. He does say, be gone. But he's not sending them anywhere. He is telling them that they have already sent themselves. 
And the reason I can say that emphatically to all of you, the reason I can say that with, with love and with uh, pureness of heart is because we know that when God created the world, where did he place us? Where did he, honestly, this is a question you can answer. Where did he place us when he created the universe, when he, created, when he did all the creation, where did he place us? In the garden. He placed us in paradise. He looked at us and our humanity and he said, this is what you deserve. You deserve paradise. This is what I made for you. This is what I have given you as a gift. I am making this beautiful world. I'm placing you in it. This is my gift to you. This is how much I love you. And when Satan rebelled against God, where did he go? He, well, he, before the garden. He went to Hades. To a place of, a dead end torment place. God prepared that place, not for us. It was not prepared for us. It was prepared for the devil. It was prepared for the demons. It was prepared for those, you know, fallen angels that rejected him. He placed us in paradise. He placed Satan there. And we know this from this gospel right here. He said, depart from me, you curse it. To the place performed, uh, prepared for the devil and all his, all his angels. This is the, these are the words that Jesus Christ says. And when he says to the, to, the, to the people on his right, he says, come blessed of my father, to the place prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So when we sit here and judge God, because we do this sometimes, why would God send us to hell? He's not. He didn't even create it for us. When he prepared the kingdom, he prepared for us the best place. We were the ones that rejected it. And then on top of it, he came himself to tell us exactly. He wants us to come so badly. He wants us to come so badly to be with him that he endured all of this so that he could give us a personal message that tells us not only what is prepared for us, but how to get there. He's given us the road map. It's a beautiful thing that we have a God that loves us this much. It's such a beautiful thing. And after everything and everything and everything and continuing and sending the Holy Spirit and all the rest of these, we have the nerve, forgive me, because this is going to come out the wrong way, but that's the only way I know how to say it. We have the nerve sometimes in our own weaknesses, in our own minds to sit and say, God judges us? Come on. Yes, there is a judgment but he's already given us the the answers on the test. If you have a teacher who's given you the answers on the test and you still refuse to use the answer sheet, that's on you, folks. That's on me. (laughs) That's on me. It's not on you. It's on me. Sorry if it's coming out harshly. It is Judgment Sunday, after all. We have to understand that our Lord will not stop. He will never stop encouraging us, calling us, inviting us to wake up and realize what is coming. Whether it be the end of our expiration on this earth because we're not drawing breath anymore or if we are alive to see him come again. Either way, there is an end to this existence on this earth and he has told us how to participate in it and how to prepare for it. And it goes to mercy, to looking at our brother and sister with love, compassion, as if the Lord himself 
was placing his image inside of the person that is right next to us because he did. And we hear it again in the epistle when St. When Paul is talking about when we are eating and causing our brother to fall. And he says, the brother for whom Christ died. That's such a beautiful image. The brother for whom Christ died. Do we look at our neighbors, at our friends sometimes, at our family that sometimes we're at odds with? Do we look at them as if Jesus Christ died for them? If they were that important that Jesus Christ died on the cross for them, do we see that? We must. We must. We must accept the fact that he died for us. Sometimes that's hard. But we also must accept the fact that he didn't just die for us. He died for each and every one of you. And for the people that we don't happen to like very much right now. And our compassion, our compassion towards those people is what God is reminding us will be a part of this judgment. Let us see our brothers and sisters as the people for whom God loves so much that he gave his life on the cross. And let us give a measure, just a measure of that love and mercy and compassion toward each and every one of those people as we hopefully will receive from them as well. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.